Okay, we're going to turn an episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. They have a really cool review, you guys, from the brand Timex. A little about them. They were originally founded back in 1854 as the Waterbury Clock Company, then later transitioned into the U.S. Time Company around World War II before settling on the name Timex Corporation um, in the 70s. Now, in terms of the type of watch, I consider this an everyday watch, some key conference tricks and design, which you're looking for something you can wear every day. Of course, you just want that versatile and sporty or that versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes. Now, in terms of this particular piece, it's actually a really fun, very, very limited edition. Um, it's a collaboration with the brand Second Second, and it is part of their If You Know, You Know series. This is the fifth iteration, also known as Episode 5. It is a 500-piece limited edition of Timex's signature Q-Series model remixed to have a playful root beer theme designed in collaboration with, of course, that French creative team, Second Second. You can get this one for $300 $150 from Belmont Watches in San Diego. So the nice thing is that it is located here in the US versus having to import and possibly pay any types of fees elsewhere. These are just 38 millimeters in diameter and they are very cool. I've, I've reviewed a similar, actually I believe it was a Todd Snyder collab in terms of uh, within this line. And this definitely feels very different than that. I mean, obviously it has a lot of fun with that seconds hand, but with all that said, let's actually get this piece, uh, you know, in hands and uh, really just uh, dive in. Okay guys, big shout out to Belmont Watches for lending this piece in, hey. hey. And let's get into the details. Check this out. I mean, obviously it's a looker, guys, as you can see. And the nice thing is, at 350 bucks, it's not too shabby. No, this isn't some hot horology piece, but it is something that is, you know, definitely legitimately collectible. People collect Timex watches. The Q range has been hugely popular. And, you know, these types of root beer colorways are awesome. Then add to the fact, if you can appreciate that really fun, uh, very dynamic seconds hand, I don't know, there's just a lot to it. And uh, in smiles per gallon alone, I think this is going to offer you a lot of decent returns, especially if you are really active in terms of engaging with the your local watch community. This is absolutely something when you're going to Schwartz cough it and then, you know, double wrist uh, your watches to have something like this on the playful side. I don't know. It's just really fun. So a little bit about the dimensions on here, 38 millimeters in diameter. 12.4 millimeters thick and 44.6 millimeters lug to lug stainless steel brushed and polished as you can see and all brand new still got the stickers and everything on there um and yeah this thing is sweet guys uh the crystal is actually a box domed acrylic so very clean and very see-through so you're gonna get really all the dynamic punch out of this dial and you're not gonna have uh you know give it a couple quick dusts there um you're really able to enjoy this, right? Um, and it's, yeah, very period correct with the acrylic. And you can also buff it out if need be. Now, it does have a push-pull crown, which is unsigned. And it has a bi-directional uh, fit there. Bezel, which is cool. And it has a uh, little, you know, of course, to continue the theme, uh, the root beer theme, you have the two-tone... Uh, aesthetic and instead of it being 24 hours like a GMT watch, it's a 12 hour bezel. So even easier and more intuitive to use. I don't know why 12 hour bezels aren't more popular. I would say even on GMT watches, especially if it is a flyer GMT, you should probably be using a 12 hour bezel versus a 24 hour bezel um, in terms of quick calculations. It's just so much more intuitive um, and I can absolutely appreciate that. So this is a useful complication and it looks good. Now, uh, it uh, the, the movement inside is a analog quartz. I don't know much about it. It's a Timex. They don't really advertise and I'm not popping this bad boy open it's not mine uh, so getting into the dial you do have a fully printed index there and uh, you do have a sunray dial with no date so it's nice and clean you're getting of course that gilt hour and minute hand with a nice frothy mug cartoon like seconds hand which is again it's just a lot of fun i i dig it this is not a one watch this is this is a 
this is a dads and grads. This is a watch to add into a collection of watches, right? Um, this is a, you know, great anniversary type gift watch, right? Uh, just, it's definitely a fun thing. And somebody maybe who enjoys watches, it's one of those things where maybe you wouldn't purchase it for yourself, but as a gift, oh my gosh, who wouldn't be thrilled to open up a box that had one of these in it? So uh, getting in to the uh, details of the, actually the case, one thing I forgot to mention is that it does give you uh, five atmospheres or 50 meters of water resistance. As long as that crown is pushed in, you should be good to go. Of course, you're not going to go actually, you know, submerging this in water if you can resist, but you know, you don't have to worry about rain and stuff like that, or, you know, heaven forbid you had to do the dishes um, and you got a little splash on your wrist or something like that. You wouldn't have to worry about it. I would probably, you know, be more worried about steam and soap suds and all that stuff. Um, but generally speaking, this can get splashed um, and you'll be fine. You probably wouldn't want to purposely wet it, but if it does get wet by accident, uh, you'd probably be good to go. Now, in terms of the bracelets, it is, of course, in Timex fashion. It is all very affordable feeling, but it's also very functional. And, uh, you know, so this is all folded over 18 millimeter lugs. It does flare out to 21 and a half millimeters and then down to about 15 and a half on that bracelet. And it's a beautiful two-tone finish here. It looks great. Um, and then, of course, you get the stamped setup pressure fit uh, essentially you can move this up and down and then once it is secured in the setting you like you just clamp it and bam now it's all set it's not going anywhere it's actually a very cool system that i've seen integrated in a lot of different ways whether it be on something that's more mesh like or something that's this like this where it feels like more a link setup even though they are just really miniature folded links there very cool um it is still at its uh you know factory setting um because it still does actually have a little bit of plastic here that's going to protect this in terms of any type of rubbing so whenever somebody does purchase this piece they'll get to be the one to have all the fun but that also means that i can't really set it for my own wrist so what i'll do is i'll just drape it on here check that out and you can see, I think it looks great. Of course, since it's so close to the camera lens, you're gonna get a bit of lens distortion and it's gonna appear larger. But because it's actually still relatively small, it's, I'd say, it's pretty easy to, to enjoy and love. So check that out. What I'll do is I'll lower my wrist down here and then I'll just tighten up the frame a bit. Okay, check it out. So very nice, nicely centered. You still get the detailed look. Worst part you're gonna see on this watch are my fingerprints. Everything else is really clean and, and a lot of fun. Again, for the price point, you you know your expectations can't be too through the roof, um, but at the end of the day, this is just a really fun piece and, and I like it for that. So with that said, let's actually get it off the wrist, set up for some loom shots, low light transition, and whoa, wrong way, and closing thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and add the lights here. Hey, as you can see, here we go. That's surprisingly good loom. Check that out. Especially considering that it's all printed. Uh, you know, I would say Timex isn't really known for their loom, so they probably could have got away with something a little bit weaker. But hey, it's... It's doing its job. Uh, of course, this isn't a dive watch, although it has kind of that diver style layout um, in terms of its legibility with the 12 o'clock, uh, the, the three, six and nine. Um, but uh, if you pay attention, you can kind of see the way that that second hand slowly obstructs the hour hand. So you can see it is fading though. Um, you know, so this probably isn't one loom beast to leave out, uh, you know, on your dresser or something to be able to tell time in the middle of the night. But one thing I always like to work in is a bit of a low light transition because you're always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it is nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes run are like in less than optimal lighting. And my goodness, this, whew, for the price point, guys, the design, the color play, I mean, the dynamic nature of that seconds hand, I, there's definitely a lot to enjoy for, again, not a lot of money, which is cool. Whew. 
even if you get a bit of harsh lighting, which typically could expose any types of production defects, again, you're just going to see some fingerprint smudges. This thing is good as new, and it shows. Look at how clean everything is, how vibrant the light just reflects off the satin. You're still getting some nice lustrous polished sections there. Nothing high level, nothing luxury like, nothing premium, but you know what? It could have been a lot worse. It didn't have to be so sharp. Like, dang, look at that on the top of the lug. That is a nice trans that is a nice sharp transition between the I mean it looks blacked out, but it's really just high polished, and then the brushing on the end of the lug. That that looks awesome. So it's just again I like that the more you look at this, the more you find cool stuff about it. Because a lot of times uh the best stuff seems to be like it's on the spec sheet, it's uh in the history, in the heritage. So it's nice to discover cool things uh you know that are down to just the individual model and the unit things that you can enjoy things that you can appreciate so very very cool guys but closing thoughts for me on the wrist nice tidy retro proportions thin relatively you know obviously it does have that acrylic bubble oh let's just get that a little Uh, it does have that acrylic crystal there, um, but yeah, it's, it's still relatively thin. Uh, you know, it's only 12.4 with that crystal. So imagine it without it. Um, when you think about just the case profile and whatnot. So yeah, this thing's cool. In terms of model variants, yeah, there's other Q series options. But again, this is the one that I think is really quite different uh, by comparison uh, for a lot of reasons. It's meant to be different, of course. Um, and this individual unit is one thing where it's different too. It's not stock photos. It's not some weird listing. Uh, if you were to purchase this one from Belmont, this is the exact one that you would get sent. I think that's cool. So in terms of comparable models, uh, yeah, I mean, this is very specific in terms of its demographic that they're going for. Um, I think this is absolutely targeting collectors, whether you're a collector buying it for yourself or you're a collector buying it for a gift for someone else. Uh, either you're trying to get into watches or somebody that you know is already crazy and bonkers like you and shares in your sickness um, and you want to, you know, give them a little smile, um, you know, without shelling out too much money you could be buying yourself a watch with. So, um, yeah, when I think of comparables, this doesn't really fall kind of within that space. So for me, guys, we'll jump into the bottom line. This is a fun little piece for those who can appreciate the root beer aesthetic, as well as the playful, you know, on the nose nod to, of course, its drink inspirations. With that said, uh, if you like the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. And yeah, another huge shout out to Belmont Watches. Thanks, guys. Oh.